direction. Let us continue with our discussion on mathematical models for three-dimensional positioning using space geodetic techniques. This time, we will cover direction mathematical model. As a matter of fact, the idea behind direction mathematical model is very simple, but as Leonardo da Vinci once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. We will start with absolute positioning. Determination of directions from satellite photography is one of the earliest methods of satellite geodesy. Directions to a satellite are obtained by photographing the satellite against a background of known stars, whose directions, given by the right ascension declination, are contained in star catalogs. Since star catalogs are based in an inertial frame, the right ascension system, the optical tracking of satellites establishes the direction in that inertial frame. As we discussed before, the true right ascension system coincides with the system of apparent places, which is most often the one used in star catalogs and which can be treated as inertial for a short period of time, such as a satellite observation session. The direction to the satellite can be represented by each unit vector, E, computed using known trigonometric expressions. It should be mentioned that the unit vector will be attached to the inertial frame used by the star catalog. It would have to be rotated to the conventional terrestrial system by means of rotation matrices considering the Earth orientation parameters. Direction to satellites requires that the satellites be illuminated by the sunlight, usually at dusk or dawn, by a laser from the ground station or can generate flashes of light in sequence. The observations can only be made when the observing site is within the Earth's shadow. The reflected and or generated light by the satellite should be strong enough to be seen against the background of stars or to leave traces of its trajectory in the photographic plate. The right ascension and declination of the satellite is derived from the right ascension and declination of the surrounding stars from a catalog. Three methods to derive direction to satellites have been developed in history. The first one was as simple as a visual observation of the satellite using a binocular or a portable telescope. Then, photographic methods start to be developed until the development of photoelectronic methods. Currently, a method known as CCD, which stands for Charge Couple Device, can be used. Direction to satellite had a tremendous impact in geodesy, and it was the method that allowed the establishment of the very first global geodetic network. The problem was that the directional accuracy that the method would allow, something at the order of 0.1 arc of seconds, was no longer competitive if compared with the accuracy offered by satellite laser ranging and by the Doppler technique available through the Navy Navigation Satellite System. Therefore, by the mid-1970s, the method was abandoned. Direction to satellites is not used for geodesy any longer, but they are still used to observe remote objects in space, for example, inactive satellites or space debris, or even to detect and monitor the movement of meteors and comets. The CCD technology is also applied for stellar and Earth-orbiting satellite navigation. The limitations intrinsic to direction to satellites are several. For example, coming from the inherent distortion of the camera lens, the inaccuracy of catalog star positions, and the effect of atmospheric refraction on the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Another limitation of direction to satellites is that it only offers directions. It does not provide scale. 
Therefore, we cannot compute the full three-dimensional position vector of the tracking station. To have scale, at least one distance on the ground or one distance to the satellite would have to be provided. As we mentioned before, the very first global geodetic network was established using direction to satellite. This network was known as the BC4 network, name given from the instrument used, the BC4 camera. A series of satellites were launched in support of satellite photography. Initially, passive balloon satellites were used, such as the experimental communication satellites ECHO-1 and ECHO-2, during the 1960s. In 1966, a dedicated satellite was launched in support of the BC4 network, the PAGEO satellite, itself also a passive balloon satellite. Active satellites capable of emitting a series of 628 flashes of about 1 millisecond length were used, namely the ANA-1, GEOS-1, and GEOS-2 satellites. The Soviets also invested in direction to satellite by establishing their own network using their own cameras, such as the AFU-75 camera shown in the image. I'm presenting the following image for illustration only. It is not a photographic plate related to direction to satellite, let these be made clear. It is a low exposition picture over meteor showers, but it is shown to provide an example of the different patterns that stars and, in this case, the meteors display. We can clearly see the circular apparent motion of the stars around the North Pole and the meteors crisscrossing the sky in apparent straight lines. Let us look now at actual photographic plates. This one, a photo taken from the AFU-75 camera. The satellite track on the sky is seen as a gray straight line. Now we can see a photographic plate taken by a station in Potsdam, Germany, taken by the satellite observation device SBG. We can see the satellite path represented by dotted straight lines and the surrounding stars inside circles. Now we can see another photographic plate taken at the same location and by the same observation device where the satellite is represented by these long straight lines and we can see one star as a bright dot at the center left of the image. Now we can see a photographic plate obtained by a BC4 camera, which shows the satellite path as a dotted straight line and the stars following a circular pattern. We will continue with the direction model next time applied in relative positioning.